Higher education in America is crushingly expensive. College tuition rates are rising far faster than family income is. Colleges are also politically monochromatic. Once in school, your kids will submit to brainwashing or they will suffer. When they come home, they may have learned to hate the values you raised them with, the ones you believe in. They may also be addicted to drugs and alcohol. So obviously the costs of college are extraordinarily high, but it's worth it, we tell ourselves, for the education. Education is key. Our kids need to learn. So the question is, are they learning? Well, several years ago, a pair of academic researchers decided to find out. They studied data from a group of more than 2,000 students enrolled in four-year colleges who've been tracked over a period of years. The book that resulted from all this research was called Academically Adrift, Limited Learning on College Campuses. Among its many findings, 45% of students, quote, did not demonstrate any significant improvement in learning over the first two years of college. Close to 40% didn't learn anything at all over four years. How did students learn so little? Well, many of them never really studied. 35% of students reported spending no more than five hours a week in academic preparation. Overall, the study found a 50% decline in the number of hours students spent studying compared to several decades ago. The average full-time college student now spends only 2.76 hours a day on all education-related activities, going to class, studying, all of it, and more than twice as much time shopping, eating, and partying. Multiply this by an entire country and you wind up with a deeply ignorant population. There has been a consistent decline in adult literacy in America over the past 25 years, despite the fact that more kids than ever are going to college. Two separate studies by the National Assessment of Adult Literacy found that most college graduates fall below proficiency in verbal and quantitative literacy. The majority could not compete simple cognitive tasks like comparing the viewpoints in newspaper editorials or calculating the cost of food items in the grocery store. A 2005 study found that only 31% of college graduates could read and understand a complex book, 31%. Surveys of American college graduates show that they are far more ignorant than their counterparts in virtually every other developed nation. In some cases, college graduates in this country got the same test scores as high school graduates in other countries. As the Educational Testing Service put it, quote, a decade ago, the skill level of American adults was judged to be mediocre. Now it is below even that. This is a crisis. So you would think that colleges would respond by increasing academic rigor. But the opposite has happened. A survey of the top public universities in America found that only nine schools required an economics course for graduation, for example. Only five required a survey course in American history. And as one researcher noted, despite lip service given to multiculturalism, fewer than half required even intermediate study of a foreign language. Meanwhile, the number of degrees awarded in women's and gender studies increased by more than 300% since 1990. College classes are getting flimsier. College graduates are getting dumber. But you would never know it from their grades, which are getting higher. In 1983, the average college GPA in this country was 2.8. It's now over 3.1. Great inflation is everywhere, but it's most profound at private schools. At Wake Forest, for example, in North Carolina, the cumulative GPA for graduating seniors in 1988 was 2.84. In 2014, it was 3.4. Nationally, the most common grade given in college courses right now is an A. According to the New York Times, about 43% of all letter grades given are A's. Only about 10% are D's and F's. In other words, more students are failing, yet almost nobody fails. Kids know less, but their teachers assure them they know more. Colleges barely teach, yet every year they increase their fees. Try that in a private business. You might get indicted for fraud. Do it at an American university, and you get billions in taxpayer subsidies.